My dad passed away from a heart aneurysm. So, and um, that was really traumatic because me and my sister were the ones that found him. I can just think back to that day and like how scared me and my sister were. It was scary. It was fucked up. We really did miss out on a lot of stuff. And we really did miss out on like, and we still are missing out, you know? Like even all of us in the relationships that we're in, we don't bring grandparents to the equation, you know? Like we just have each other as siblings and we, you know, show up for each other the way that we can. That's why for me, like when it came to meeting Jacob and meeting his mom, it was like a breath of fresh air to be able to like be with someone that I really love and I really like their mom. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The all-in-one platform to build your dream website. With Squarespace, design is a breeze. Whether you're starting a passion project or launching a business, Squarespace empowers you to create a stunning online presence. Try it out yourself and go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now enjoy the video. And just so you know, I released a new project. It's actually a love song project. It's called Men Ain't Shit Except Mine. And um, it came out in October and you should go listen to it because it's love songs. <laughs> and it's about Jacob. And it's about Jacob, my love bug. Hey, we're finally doing it. And we're not talking about anal. Stop! You win. <laughs> Do you know how I feel about you? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> um, I was so drawn to you because you look like my family. Yeah. In particular, actually, you look like my cousin who died this year. What? So, Dang. I mean... I'm sorry about that, Shana. Oh, thank you. And then... You and I had a baby around the same time, like I think four or five months apart. Yeah. Uh, and so we became friends, I think, really through motherhood. Yeah. And just getting to know you, like you're just one of, you're just so pure. Thank you. You're just a really, just genuine hearted, what you see is what you get. And what people see, that authenticity, that like warmth, that love, like what you give on stage is, is what you give to your kids. It's what you give. I mean, obviously you give more to Lily, but. Yeah. I just like, Thank I don't you, know, Shan. I have a deep, you are like the good of humanity to Thank me. Thank you, Shan. And you're like a genuine little sister to me. Thank you, Shan. I really appreciate that. That was really nice. Thanks. That was really nice. And I, I think it's not that your story makes me appreciate you more because I appreciate you as is. Yeah. But knowing your story, it makes me in awe of you more. Yeah. Um, so to what you're comfortable with, can you tell people your upbringing yeah yeah i grew up in the west suburbs of chicago um my dad was a single parent from the time you were born um well my dad ended up getting custody of us when i was maybe um 14 months i think is what my sister told me irma was like 15 at the time my sister tina was like three years old and then my brother mark i think was like five maybe it was at a time then that my dad um fought to get full custody of us because there was a few incidences that were happening with Irma and she was older so it was affecting her a lot. So she finally told my dad about some things that were going on, just the paranoia that my mom was experiencing. Um, and so he filed for full custody, you know, went to DCFS and stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, my dad was granted full custody of us and I lived with him until well, just him and Irma and all my other siblings until I was maybe, I wanna say like the end of being five-ish is when my mom came back. My dad um, had her come back and live with us and it was um, understood that she would have to be taking her medication and so she was doing that. Was he still in love with her or he was doing this as a caretaker? Well, I can't say if, if my dad was still in love with my mom or not. I think my dad loved her very much. I think he, wanted to have a family because, you know, my dad was adopted. So I think that he really wanted to have a family of his own. So he really did fight to tr for it. Um, but yeah, she ended up living with us for maybe like a year and a half, I want to say, probably two years. And um, I ended up finding the medication that she was supposed to be taking on the side of her bed. And so I had to, I didn't know at the time what it was, but 
I told my sister Irma, and then my sister Irma, this makes me feel bad. Um, my sister Irma told my dad, and then my dad had to um, put her out, basically. That was kind of like, from that point forward, um, she stopped living with us. I remember us taking her to the train station and stuff and um, saying goodbye to her. And my dad had to get a restraining order against her to make sure that she wouldn't try to take us. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until I was 12 that my dad passed away. So yeah, from that point forward of like seven, almost eight, um, it was just my dad um, taking care of us. And then my older sister, Irma, because she was 15 years older than us, she always kind of took on that motherly role. She's 15 years older than me, 11 years older than my brother. So, but yeah, she used to be the ones that would get us ready for the babysitter and take us to the babysitter's house. And she would do all of that before getting on the school bus herself. Um, my sister Irma was really intelligent. She ended up getting full scholarships academically to like um, University of Illinois. And my sister really wanted to be an engineer. So um, that was a big pick for her. But my dad asked her to stay home and commute to UIC, which she got accepted into as well so that he so that she could still help us like help him with us so she did decide to do that and um and also just a clarification point yeah. your dad died suddenly he didn't have time to make no. plans yeah my dad passed away from a heart aneurysm so and um that was really traumatic because me and my sister were the ones that found him Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm just, I just know that it's not just you know, me and you talking about it. Yeah. We're talking about it in front of a lot of people potentially. So it's just a little bit more. Cause I can just think back to that day and like how scared me and my sister were. It was scary. It was fucked up. Um, Do you want me to get you a tissue? Um, yeah, right? I'm just gonna I got leave. a paper towel right there. I'll get it. Yeah, it's just something that in general is like, just for our whole family, you know? Like, we really did miss out on a lot of stuff. And we really did miss out on, like, and we still are missing out, you know? Like, even all of us in the relationships that we're in, we don't bring grandparents to the equation, you know? Like, we just have each other as siblings, and we, you know, show up for each other the way that we can. Um, but yeah, it's really just us. So it's like, that's why for me, like, when it came to meeting Jacob and meeting his mom, it was like a breath of fresh air to be able to like be with someone that I really love and I really like their mom. When you yeah, think much. about your childhood and how you were raised and the quality of that experience, what what do you feel? Uh, well, yeah, I would, I would say that, yeah, despite all of the things that I did experience, I do feel really fortunate and lucky that, yeah, I didn't have my dad for a long period of time, but I had a really good dad. And so, like, that kind of makes me feel good. Like, even in that, like, he instilled so many things in me. His personality was so fun, and he was so um, open and, and, and just so caring towards other people and so hospitable. He was always so kind to anyone that he met. But he also had a bad temper, too, and I kind of respected that. Cause my dad was sweet, but if you pushed him, he would take it there with you. So I did feel that like safety that I knew that my dad, yeah, he's nice, but he'll still fuck you up if you take it there. Like, man, my dad, my dad. That's you. Yeah, seriously. Um, but yeah, I do feel fortunate for that. You know, like I really did get to experience a really good dad. Like my dad never missed a game. My dad was always there. He was always on time. He, he instilled so much time management in me and like, uh, just respecting other people and, and like he was funny like, I don't know my dad was just so welcoming people just always gravitated towards my dad did you see your mom and dad in love or did you see your dad in love with someone else I've never seen my dad in love with anyone else um, that was something that we used to feel kind of bad I think as we got older we would dwell on that a little bit like damn daddy was probably hella lonely you know he never really brought anybody around us um, maybe he was dating hooking up with women, I don't know. Uh, but he never brought anybody for us to meet, yeah. But um, I, I've seen pictures of my parents together, but I, no, I've never really seen them be 
affectionate or anything. I feel like maybe when I was a kid, I like walked on them smashing, but that was like disturbing almost. I didn't really know what to think. Now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, that's what they were doing. Um, and I've seen my mom be physical towards my dad, like snatch the phone out of his hand and like hang up the phone really hard. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really have too many memories of them like being affectionate. What did you grow up thinking about love? I guess that I was um, more so probably just kind of like love like the movies probably. That probably inspired my what I thought love should look like. Jacob's mom helped uh, change my perspective on a lot of things. I feel like she's helped me become a um, way more understanding when it comes down to like just conflict in a relationship and really trying to reflect on yourself. You know, just because I think when I was younger, I was, I had to be right. I didn't give a fuck, you know? Like, it wasn't about understanding the other person. It was proving that what they said wasn't right. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just think over time, I've, I've definitely, I just got more open-minded, I think, and less, because yeah, I can still get mad, but I'm, I don't get as mad as I used to when I was younger. You and Jacob got together pretty young. And you got together in a setting that, like, it's not always, like, it's a, it could just be a thing. He was a video boy. Yeah, he was modeling the video. Yeah, he was, there, he was your love interest. Uh -huh. And you were like, that dude. Yeah. Um, and you were how old at the time when you met him? I was 22. Damn, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. Did you, When did you start to realize, like, oh, we're building a life together. We're building something special. Oh, I, I knew Jacob was it for me, like, after a couple of weeks of hanging out with him. I just loved his personality. But yeah, I always felt really sure about Jacob because he always reciprocated the energy that I gave. And he was always trying to figure out a way to come hang out with me or just spend time with me. And um, he never gave me the feeling that he was like jealous of me or that um, insecure about anyone liking me or, you know, he never has said anything to me like, oh, why, why are all these people making these comments? You know, just he's never been that type of person. Well, he's just been always supportive and like genuine and just honest and yeah, I don't know. He just always gave me good energy and he always reciprocated the love that I gave him. So it was like, it just felt natural. What's up? Uh, popping in real quick to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video here, Squarespace. Now Squarespace, that platform quite literally keeps this channel up and running. Squarespace is more than just a website builder. It's your partner in creativity and business growth. With designed intelligence, you can craft a personalized website that truly represents your brand. I mean, it's like having a design team at your fingertips. And let's talk about business. Squarespace Payments makes managing transactions easy with flexible payment options for your customers. I mean, nobody likes to get to the payment option and have to go through a whole bunch of stuff that they're not familiar with. We built Shan's website on Squarespace, and let me tell you guys, it was a game changer because we were able to customize it from the SEO tools to flexible payment options to design intelligence to Fluid Engine. I'm telling you, it is all here, and I am no coder, so we were able to customize Shan's website to a T. So, are you ready to start your Squarespace website journey? Go to squarespace.com and go get that free trial. Go play around, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Trust me, it's worth it. Now enjoy the rest of this video. I think that it's remarkable that you were 22 years old, didn't have the experience, had so much on the line, um, so much to prove to yourself, to your family, you know, and you got into this relationship and you were able to bring it to where it is today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I really, really, when I think back on it now, the first time that I went to Australia, I was really excited, I was really nervous. It was my first time meeting Jacob's family. Um, Jacob's family was really excited to meet me. They're Serbian, so they're, his aunt, you know, they got the drinks flowing, we come in and everyone's so excited. Jacob hadn't been home in like four years, so everybody's really excited to see him. Um, and so we get in, we're like all sitting around, we've been having drinks, champagne, whatever. And we start talking about rappers. And um, for anyone who wants to know, Jacob is the biggest Tupac fan ever, biggest Tupac fan. So we start arguing about Tupac and stuff. And I'm saying that if Lil Wayne passed away after the Carter Three, he would be as famous as Tupac is today. Like that was basically my argument. And, um, 
he was not having that. And then he started like talking shit about Lil Wayne and like making jokes about Lil Wayne. And everybody at the, at the table was laughing and stuff. And so then that was starting to piss me off because I felt like nobody was agreeing with me. And I'm drinking, so I'm just, and I also want them to like me. So I'm like, fuck why they keep laughing at his stupid fucking jokes, you know? I was getting mad. And um, at one point when Jacob kind of like mic dropped the, um, the argument, he like got up to like stop talking about it. And then I was like, why don't you go suck Tupac's dick? I said that in front of his whole family. And so it was kind of silent. His mom being his mom, how funny she is, she kind of chuckled, you know? And um, he, he, later on, he told me that his dad took him to the side and was like, she always be talking to you like that, son? And I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh God. And then um, later on that night, we start arguing about Russell Westbrook. And I'm not a big fan of Russell Westbrook. I like Derrick Rose more. And so we're like going back and forth about that, but I'm arguing with his little brother. And then that argument got super heated. I kept calling him a dick rider. Why keep saying dick? I kept calling him a dick rider and it just escalated from there and he's screaming through the house. And uh, I'm yelling back and basically Jacob's dad kind of says like, you got to like, get out of here with all that kind of a thing. And that, oh my God, I wanted to jump off a bridge. And I told Jacob, like, take me, take me back to your aunt's house. I don't want to stay here. I'm so embarrassed. I'm getting a flight in the morning. This is the worst thing I could have ever done. I can't believe I left an impression like this on your family. Like, this is so embarrassing. And so he starts trying to drive me home. But Jacob has this old ass bug that is missing a gear. So we get up this fat hill and we're going up the hill. And then um, the shit starts fucking up. So we're yelling at each other. And it's like 10 o'clock at night. And someone comes out and they're like, my mom's sleeping, May, or something. And Jacob, it's a convertible. So like Jacob stands up and he screams at him, mind your fucking business. Like that. And um, we couldn't drive there. So we had to go back. And then his mom, being the awesome little hippie lady that she is, she's sitting out front on the grass. And I'm too embarrassed to go back inside the house. So she like calls me over. And she's like, sit down. And um, I'm like, oh my, I'm just crying, I'm so embarrassed. She's like, why are you crying? I'm like, I just feel so bad. Like, I love Jacob so much and I, I can't believe I've left, I left an impression like this on you guys. And she goes, oh, don't worry about it. She's like, you don't wanna hear half the shit I said when I'm drunk. And then she's like, um, you know, starts asking me how I feel. And, and I'm saying, oh, I'm, I'm just really angry right now. And she's like, well, what's underneath that? And I was like, what do you mean what's underneath that? And she's like, what's underneath the anger? I'm like, I don't know, she's like, think about it. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm, I guess I'm just upset that, you know, Jacob was arguing, like people were laughing and then I'm arguing with Gabe and she's like, well, why is that making you mad? I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't want to like feel embarrassed. And she's like, okay, she's like, that's what it is. You're, you're just getting embarrassed and um, you need to f start figuring out what, why are you embarrassed? And, and you're going to learn how to not let that upset you. It's not that big of a deal. Like all the things that you're getting upset about. And um, we just had a really long conversation that night. And she said to me, you know, I know Jacob. Um, he's never talked about somebody as much as he's ever talked about you. He's never had a girlfriend this serious. I know he really loves you. Um, just give him 30 minutes and he'll calm down and you guys will be fine. She's like, Stevie will be fine. You talk to him tomorrow. You can just apologize to him tomorrow. She was like, now Gabe, and Jacob's little brother. She's like, I don't know. <laughs> she's like, I don't know what he's gonna say. And when we went to go pick him up the next day, because he slept over a friend's house, when he got in the car, I apologized. He just was silent. <laughs> and I was like, all right, you know, I know I'm going to have to put in a little bit of work to show him that I'm a nice person, because I, I didn't leave a good impression on him. So, um, but yeah. One of the things with relationships that's taken me a really long time to figure out is the balance between being with somebody who accepts you exactly as you are for who you are, while also holding you accountable to your potential. Yeah. Because it's like, I want somebody to know that there's more to me than who I am today, yeah. but I also want somebody who fully embraces me as I am today. Yeah. And I feel like that's a very delicate balance that you and Jacob have struck with each other. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I really feel, yeah, like, I don't know, Jacob has never made me feel at any point in my in our relationship together that I wasn't good enough for him or that I needed to change something that was necessarily like something that you can't really change almost you know like when you're going like like what I was saying like when I put on weight when I got pregnant Jacob never made a comment ever he never said anything to me about it It was me beating myself up 
you know, seeing Louis, oh, what the hell? He's like, you look fine. It's all, you know, like, there's not, nothing has changed. Um, like, yeah, <laughs> everything has changed, you know? Um, but I think that's even to my own internalized, like, misogyny, feeling like I need to be, like, the baddest bitch for him to find me desirable, you know? Not taking into account that Jacob does just like me, you know? Um, but yeah, it's just interesting. I also like that Jacob is someone that when you first meet him, he's not gonna show you all his cards. Like, you kind of have to peel it back. And like you said, I'm very curious. So I like that about Jacob. I like that he's kind of mysterious in that way that I kind of have to like pick a little bit and like pull back layers and she shows me different sides of himself. I kind of, I just kind of like that about him. I really love, I want to get to our ramen uh, yes. lesson in a second because as soon as you said that, that had really clicked for me because that ramen analogy is like perfectly how I see you. Yeah. Because in some ways, you're so yourself. It's so clear where you're from. It's so clear what your value system is. It's so yeah. clear that you grew up in a house where swearing was like has yeah. to catch up because that's yeah. a value that you and Lily have together. Yeah. And you're unapologetic about it. Yeah. But then there's also so many ways that I know that you love Lily and that you mother and that you love Jacob and that you partner that yeah. are probably completely different than what you grew up. Yeah. And that's like that ramen example that just because you grew up with it being a certain way doesn't mean that you have to abandon it once you know better. Yeah. So you can just make it better. Yeah. Yeah. You can make ramen like ramen can be unhealthy and it can be something that you're used to because it tastes so good and that's it's nostalgic and you're used to it in that way. But if you actually make ramen in a way that's not, you know, the 90 sign, 99 cent pack noodle and you can go to a nice restaurant and actually get a really nice bowl of ramen, it changes your perspective on the whole entire situation, the whole entire dish. So I also do a lot of self-reflection when it comes to me as a mom thanks to Jacob's mom, because that was one thing she said to me when I got pregnant, that I was gonna project all of my fears and all of my desires onto my child. And you have to figure out a healthy balance of doing that. Because yeah, sometimes your fears are right, but sometimes your fears are only that, a fear. And you don't know if by holding your child back from doing certain things, what you're gonna limit them to because you're afraid. So for people who grew up like you, needing to suppress emotions, or to lash out to survive um, and who look at you now as a role model and rightfully so. I mean, I actually reframe this with somebody as like not a role model, but a truth model because a role model is somebody who like plays a role well yeah. where in, you know, you're not playing a role. Yeah. You're just authentically living your experience and you're brave enough to share to other people. But for people who look at you as like a truth model, because you genuinely do have a beautiful relationship. You live in a beautiful home. Yeah. You have a career that you love. Yeah. You have a daughter who is incredible, who loves the hell out of you. Yeah. You love the hell out of her. And you guys have a beautiful family unit. What's the lesson? Like, how do you, how do you get from A to B or from A to Z in most people's minds? You have to really be honest with yourself about the things that make you insecure, the things that make you scared, your abandonment issues, how you've dealt with conflict in the past. And, and try not to be as judgmental, like be a, give people a little bit more grace. I don't know, I think a lot about the dynamic that me and Lily have, and um, I used to be hesitant about posting her on the internet and stuff, but at the same time, for me, it's like everything that I've always been has always been me. Like I've always been my personal day-to-day -day kind of life, like who I am. So um, I just feel it would be weird and un, it would be inauthentic for me to not show my motherhood journey and who I am and the struggles that may come with it or um, be an example of someone who didn't have a mom and now they have a child. You know, just let other people see that and see that it can, you can have a healthy after, after all, you know, after all the things that you've been through. Because I think there's a lot of people that have, uh, you know, unconventional family dynamics and they came from broken things. So I don't know, I just want people to know that like, there is a way to be a good person and like stay true to yourself and make money. When you think about the example that you're setting for Lily with what you and Jacob share, how does that make you feel? It makes me, it makes me hopeful for her, but also too, it makes me um, just kind of nervous too, you know? Cause I do feel like what me and Jacob have isn't that common, you know? Or even what you and Jared have, it's not that common. So um, 
I'm just hoping that it doesn't create some sort of fairy tale idea. I'm not saying that we're the perfect relationship, but I do want her to take everything with a grain of salt as she gets older because I've been through other relationships. I know that it isn't all rainbows and butterflies, you know? I know that there, there's a lot that comes with dating and figuring out who you are and dating other people and, and them figuring out who they are when you're growing up, you know? Because had, I've had some terrible relationships. So if I know that I've went through that, then our children are going to go through something. They're not going to not go any, through anything, you know? So that part scares me a little bit. But I want to have one more, I've told you. We'll see how that goes. That's gonna, that'll be another testament. We'll come back and do another <laughs> podcast as an update and see what the hell happened after the second baby arrived. Do me and Jacob still love each other as much? <laughs> have a stay tuned look. <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, nah, I think also I'm very optimistic. I'm the type of person that thinks things like me and Jacob can do anything. Like, I don't like, if we had twins, I'd be like, that'd be scary. But I would still believe in my heart that I'm, if even if Jacob was scared, I'd be like, no, I'm I'm going to do it, you know, or we couldn't do it. Like, I'm very optimistic in that way. I really feel like if we're in this position, like we can figure it out. I'm like, yeah, I've always been that way. I love that. Yeah, that's it. If we're in this position, we can figure it out. <laughs> that's the wrap. We can figure our way out. <laughs> 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 Sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs>